Hello my angels, how are we all doing today? I know I look like a bean, but we'll just ignore that for now because I am coming back with another what I eat in a day video today. Um, I've already had breakfast this morning. I just had like toast with peanut butter and some hemp seeds sprinkled on there. I feel like it wasn't really much for me to explain so I didn't really like show you the method. It's very simple. You just toast the bread, put some butter on it, put some peanut butter on it, put some jam on it. And I sprinkled some hemp seeds on there for a bit of extra protein and fat because I'm trying to get thick. I'm trying to get slim thick, you know? So I am just filming the intro in my bedroom because dad's playing some music and I don't want to like tell him to turn it off. So the next meal will be a voiceover and I guess tonight I will, I'm going to be showing you guys my roast. I did a little poll and you guys said that you wanted to see how I make my roast. I've been getting questions about it for like two years. So I'm going to show you guys that tonight. But for now we're going to do a kind of bougie beans and tofu scramble and dad's making festival which is like if you guys know what dumplings are, it's like a sweet dumpling and it is my favorite thing. So yeah, he's already started making it though. I guess I can find a recipe for it and if you guys want to try it out, you can. Um, I don't know how to make it. I know how to make dumpling. I don't think it's that different. I think you just add some cornmeal and some sugar. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you guys how I make my tofu scramble. Hopefully you guys will like it. I feel like whenever I've tried a tofu scramble outdoors, I've never liked it. So I thought one day to myself i was like let me just try and make it myself and see if i can actually enjoy it because i'm sure there's a reason that it's a thing like surely it can't be as bad as the ones i've tried and i think i've finessed it guys so um yes i will get in the kitchen now and show you guys how i make that i'm starving it's literally almost one o'clock now so yes i just need to find my tripod first <laughs> we've secured the tripod hey guys please excuse my voice i'm recording this just after i've woken up but uh, let's get into it. So as with most of my dishes, we're gonna start by cutting up some onion. Um, I'm doing the little thin slither method. <laughs> and of course garlic, because what would a meal be without garlic? Like seriously, and a lot of it. <laughs> some celery. We're gonna cop, we cop it, we're gonna chop it up quite fine just one stalk some pepper basically you can use kind of any vegetables you want and this is for the beans um, I'm just using what we had there's a few bits that are actually missing um, leek can be quite nice in there as well so once my pan has been heating up for a little bit I'm just going to throw some olive oil in there and throw the onions in first let them soften and cook down a little bit before I add in the garlic and the rest of the veggies. And then we're gonna do the same with those, just let them kind of cook down for a little bit and soften up and kind of infuse. Once that's done, we're gonna throw the beans in. And usually I would slice up a tomato and throw it in here, but we didn't have one. So I'm throwing in some thyme and some bay leaves just to add a bit of flavor, some turmeric powder some ginger powder because i don't have any fresh turmeric or ginger usually i would use fresh turmeric or ginger but you you get the same kind of vibes some paprika some cumin powder just a tiny bit as i always say if you put too much it can overpower a meal and taste quite bitter and i think this was just like cayenne pepper for a little kick and then i'm just going to mix it all in just to make sure all the powders and flavors and spices are blended and then we're going to get started on the tofu so this is the tofu I use, it's a tofu by far so I'd 100% recommend it if you're going to make this meal because it's really like firm and just mm, it's good. So here I'm just squeezing out the excess water, usually I'd use um, a paper towel or something but I didn't have it so I'm literally just squeezing it out with my hands, just squeeze out as much water as you can basically. And then I'm just breaking it up into a bowl. Um, to give it that kind of scrambled eggs consistency. It's pretty simple. This meal is really straightforward once you know what you're doing. And delicious. Voila. <laughs> so for the kind of egg saucy thing, I'm gonna put some turmeric, some paprika, some, a tiny bit of onion powder. Again, that can be a bit overpowering. So just a little bit, I'm making such a mess. Some garlic granules, obviously. <laughs> Wow, she's still going. <laughs> um, some whole grain mustard, this, mm, and some nutritional yeast.
Mix it all together. Throw in some milk. I do throw in a little bit of soy sauce as well, or you can use salt, or you can use this, this stuff called black salt. It literally smells like egg. I think it's salt without the sulfur removed and it tastes quite eggy as well. So if you really want it to have that eggy taste, you can do that. So for the tofu, I'm just gonna melt some butter in a pan, throw the tofu in. I put it on a medium high heat, I'd say. Um, give it a little stir. Just let it kind of brown up a little bit. To be honest, I say that mine never browns, but <laughs> um, I'm usually too impatient to wait. And then throw that um, kind of saucy mixture over the top. Mix it all together. And then basically all you have to do is just let that cook down to the consistency that you want. So you can leave it more runny or you can let it cook down until it's quite dry. I like mine somewhere in between. I like it to still be like a little bit moist. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's basically it. Like I said, usually with the beans, I would add a tomato and I would also right at the end throw in some coriander and just mix it in, but we didn't have any. The coriander makes it just insane. Um, so bear that in mind if you're going to make this. But yeah, here I am stuffing my face. I was so hungry. <laughs> yeah, that was delicious. Um, let me know if you try it. Oh, that lighting's not great. Hey, hey, my angels. <laughs> so I started filming on what I eat in a day the other day and um, I showed you my breakfast and my lunch and then PMDD hit and I felt like shit for like the last three or four days. But today, so I had intended to cook this ages ago, but I just couldn't even face cooking anything. I ordered a curry the other day. It was delish. Um, but yeah, I am back and better i feel better i feel good so i'm gonna make a roast tonight and as promised on here and on my instagram i did a poll and you guys chose the roast over the tofu katsu curry so i will show you that but not today today i'm going to show you a roast that was very long-winded um so let's just get started i'm so excited i'm so excited to eat this is literally like my favorite so the first thing that we do is we get a baking dish this is for the potatoes and you get some oil in there. I've got the oven heating up already. Do you know what? We're gonna do all olive oil today. Just cause it tastes so damn good. Um, so you just want like a nice little layer. You wanna fill the base with oil. I can't close the bottle. <laughs> and then literally just whack that in the oven. I've got it on 200 now cause you want the oil to be really hot for when you put the potatoes in it. Trust me, it helps with the crispiness. It's a trick that my mum taught me. My mum makes the best roast potatoes ever and she taught me this years ago and I've never forgotten it and anyone that's ever had my roast potatoes is like, damn girl. <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought I would share the secret recipe with you guys. And yeah, it just goes to show that you don't need like um, goose fat or anything special. You just need some good potatoes, hot oil, a little bit of flour, salt if you're going to add salt. Obviously, as I've said before, I don't put salt on anything because my dad's got high blood pressure. so. I've got to keep that in mind, um, but I just put salt on the end, on at the end even. Um, but yeah, probably the best roast potatoes you've ever had in your life. I got you. <laughs> I'm gonna take this big pot and I'm gonna get, ow. <laughs> I'm gonna get some water boiling in this so that we can parboil the potatoes, which basically just means partially boil them a little bit. So they're just a little bit softer so they cook better and they're fluffy in the middle, but crispy on the outside, you know. Chef's kiss. I've already boiled the kettle, so I'm just going to pour the water in and let it kind of heat up a little bit more slowly whilst I prepare the potatoes. I'm getting hot. Oh, I want to show you guys my new pajamas. I don't even wear pajamas usually, as you guys will know if you've watched my vlogs. But okay, on camera, this looks like a little, like a little kid, like a little round cherub, but it's actually a moon. <laughs> got these little astrology print pajamas from ASOS. I'll link them down below if they're not sold out. But yeah, love these, so cute. Right, so I've got some Maris Piper potatoes. Um, those red skin potatoes are really nice as well. Um, but I just like these because they seem to roast really nicely. So I'm just gonna wash them and peel them and chop them up basically. That should be enough. Does anyone else find the sound of like peeling hard vegetables and chopping like crunchy vegetables really therapeutic? Or is it just me? Or I just 
a loony. Oh good, I need a rest. I need to take a break mate, I tell ya. I almost forgot to plug my mic in. Bad. But then I remembered that you're going to need to hear the sizzle that comes off of these potatoes when you drop them in the oil. <laughs> um, very important ASMR. Okay, so I chop my potatoes like this into like slices, I guess, like chunky slices, and then I just cut those slices in half, sometimes into three, depending on how big the potato is. But again, the size of the potato just depends on what you, your preference is, it doesn't matter. Like I've said before, when it comes to cooking, it's all about what you like, it's so subjective, and I'd never try and force someone to like something in the way that I like it, because I totally get it. There's loads of things that I don't like that other people love. But yeah, oh, I love that sound, and it feels so nice. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Special action karaoke bars. I can't get that bloody song out of my head, and that's the only part that I know and you're running late with half your makeup on. <sighs> I'm losing the plot guys this lockdown needs to be over soon because your girl's stressed your girl's got people to meet friends to see places to go so basically got to be really careful here I'm just gonna put the potatoes in but I don't want to chuck them in actually I can do it with the, the chopping board I don't want to throw them in because I know I'll hurt myself but if we do it like this do you know what i'll link this chopping board it's so good because it's got these like raised corners so basically when you want to pour something into something else it catches any fallout although it didn't actually work just then but usually it does <laughs> right so i'm just going to let those boil for a few minutes i don't really know how to explain to you when they're ready but like they still want to be quite firm you don't want them to be like easy to break because you're going to shake them up in some flour but you just want them to be like a little bit cooked i don't know how to explain it but what am I doing here? In the meantime, let's get the carrots ready. I'm just gonna do two little ones, just because there's gonna be more veggies than just this. Actually, this is like just a carrot that's been cut, but it's fine. Do I peel them? No, I don't. No need. Right, wash those. Wait, let me. I am erratic AF today. Um, so I'm just gonna cut off the ends. Don't know why, just am. <laughs> So I'm gonna cut this in half. Again, chunkiness of your carrots depends on your character. <laughs> um, no, I'm joking. Cut them in half, and then I'm gonna make them smaller just so they cook a bit quicker. Is that enough carrots? So I'm just gonna take a little bit of olive oil. I say a little bit, we'll see if I can manage to only pour a little bit, probably not. So some olive oil. And I like to put some agave on the carrots because I don't know, it just tastes really good. And they're like kind of it's almost like a honey glazed carrot um, and again usually I would put salt but no can do so I'm just gonna leave that on the side I'm gonna check the potatoes I need to find the col colander colander here it is so those potatoes were on for about 10 minutes but they weren't fully boiling at first so I'd say maybe a little bit less but basically you want to be able to get the fork into them without it being like crunchy but you don't want them to be starting to flake if that makes sense so i'm going to get them out of there now i'm just going to drain them in the colander you don't need to see that part do you i'm always like have i done too many have i made enough i don't know anyway here's where the magic comes in i'm going to want a big bowl plain flour just put a little bit in the bowl oops i said a little bit is it bad to pour it back in i don't know whatever so I'm going to put a little bit in the bottom of the bowl and I'm going to pour the potatoes in. Shake them around. Did I cook them enough? I'm sure they'll be fine. You want to shake them around and usually you'd put salt in this as well but obviously like I said I'm not going to do that. You don't have to though. I feel like the potato, the potatoes, <laughs> the potatoes are just as good either way. So I just put a little bit more at the top. I just want them to be kind of evenly coated. This is what they look like. You don't want to put too much flour, otherwise you just make flour cakes. You kind of just make dumplings because there's like loads of flour. Uh, do I want a little bit more? No, that should be fine. See how they're kind of just coated just a little bit quite evenly. That's all that you want. And then I'm going to show you. I don't know if the oil's going to be hot enough yet. Hopefully it should be. Yeah, it looks hot enough to me. 
guys at this point please be careful because this oil is so hot and you really really don't want to burn yourself right i want you guys to hear this sizzle so basically all you're going to do now is place your potatoes in the tray listen to this oh, do you know how much this excites me oh baby oh my god i love potatoes like how amazing are potatoes you can have them in so many different forms and they all feel different mashed potato chips roast potato how else can you do potatoes <laughs> um you guys get the drift you guys know what i'm talking about oh love a good spud i've made quite a few potatoes haven't i oh dear i've got no more room this is a problem that i face almost every time i make a roast either way too many or not enough we always need more potatoes like there's always space for more potatoes i'm gonna try and fit one more in there go on go on get in there yeah <laughs> why am i like this and then basically we're just gonna throw that in the oven i'm gonna turn it down to like 180 it was on 200 just to get the oil really hot so i'm gonna put that down to about 180 i'm just gonna throw those in the middle tray and let them cook away <gasps> oh shit! i forgot to put something on the potatoes i do this every time okay Sorry, my angels, I'll bring you back out for a second. Um, rosemary, duh. Mm. See how much more beautiful that looks with a bit of rosemary on there? Oh, what a beauty she is. Okay, for the veggies, we're gonna want some green beans. And I like to cut them a specific way. I don't really know why, I just feel like I prefer them this way. And I also think it's because my grandma used to cook them like this. I'm gonna wash these. Okay, here's the tea. Basically, I cut either end off and then I slice them down the middle, like so. Um, and then I cut them in like thirds or halves, depending on how lazy I'm feeling and on how large they are. That's a rather large green bean right there. But yeah, I don't do them all one by one. Don't worry, I am. Um, I get a few and I line them up, behead them, and then betail them. Oh my god, what is. <laughs> I think I'm funny, but I'm not. I'm really not. Like so. And then, yeah, the, this bit you have to do one by one. But um, that's basically all I do. So I'm going to get going on that. This one will be cut into thirds because it's quite big. Now that the longest part is over and my neck is almost broken, <laughs> I'm going to put the like roast, the fake meat in the oven. So let me go grab that. Okay, so this is by far my favorite one that I've tried. It's the Linda McCartney vegetarian beef roast with red wine and shallot glaze. And it's actually suitable for vegans. It's super easy. Like you literally don't have to do anything and it's so delicious. So, literally looks like that. You put it in the oven for I think 45 minutes. 40 minutes if you've got a fan oven, so 40 minutes, and then take it out, cover it with foil, and put it in for another 15. So it's super straightforward. And now that the potatoes have been on for like 13, 12 minutes, I'm going to throw the roast in. Oh, did you see the steam coming off of that? Potatoes are bubbling away nicely. It smells delicious. So I'm literally just gonna whack the roast in and I think I'm gonna throw the carrots in now as well. If I need to take them out for a little bit, I will. And then I'll put them back in later. But yeah, both underneath the potatoes. Close that off. And now I'm gonna set the timer again for 30 minutes and I'll check on it all then. 33 minutes, let's just do 33. So for the kale, I like this. It's so delicious. It's the Cavolo Nero. It's just absolutely divine. To be honest, I don't even know if it's normal to have greens with a rose, but we just love veggies and it just, it tastes so good. Why wouldn't you? Um, so for the kale, basically what I'm going to do is wash all the leaves and then just tear all the sides off so that we don't have this big stalk in the middle because this is really like chewy, gritty um, and difficult to cook. So we just get rid of that. Okay, 
Okay, once I'm done doing that, literally just gonna like bunch it up and cut it into like little slithers. <laughs> oh God. I need to get out of the house. I need to see my friends. I need to just see people. I can't do this anymore. Oh, how good does that sound? Not as good as it feels. I know this looks like a lot, but I promise you it's like spinach. Like once you start cooking it, it all just disappears. And then you're like, I should have made more. But I feel like we've got enough in here. So the last thing we're gonna need for this is just a load of garlic. When I say a lot of garlic, I, I use quite a lot of garlic. You don't have to use as much as I do. I just really love garlic. Especially with vegetables, just garlic and like butter is the one. I'm gonna use six, I think that'll do. You cut the bottom end off, press down on it. Watch this, it's like magic. Oh my God, it's gonna fail this time, isn't it? Yep. Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> I've just embarrassed myself for the millionth time. Here we go. Cut the base, squash it down, pull it off. Will it work this time? Yeah, see that? Again, this is how my nan would cook green beans. She would just get loads of garlic and butter and basically um, saute them until they were soft, which is weird. Like most people don't eat them soggy and soft, but I don't know what she did. That woman's cooking was magical, man. Love that woman. You can do whatever you want here. You can crush it, but I'm just gonna do like really thin little slithers. I don't know why. Dad's just got me doing this. And to be honest, I like the little chunks of garlic. Keep these on the other end of the board because they're gonna go in first with the butter. If you're doing this, be really careful. I always hold the knife at an angle and make sure that my nail is what the slant of the knife is hitting, if that makes sense. As long as you keep the knife at an angle, you pretty much won't cut yourself. I know this looks like a lot of garlic, but I promise you, you won't regret it. It's so worth it. Oh my God, it smells so good. I love food, man. When I first made this for my dad, the vegetables in particular, he was like, oh my God, this is so good. What have you put in it? I was like, it's literally just garlic and butter. He couldn't believe it. But I tell you, sometimes, you know that saying like, don't fix what's not, what isn't broken? Is that, is that the saying? You guys know what I'm saying. Sometimes it's so true, like you don't have to overdo it. Just a simple bit of butter and garlic will bring out the flavors of the veggies and it's just complimentary to the highest degree. Right, that's that done. Sniffing my fingers casually because it just smells so good. Oh, everything is looking good. So I'm just gonna basically go chill out for a minute whilst the spuds, the spuds and that cook a little bit more and then we'll get cracking on this. That's it. Takes a bit of prep, but it's actually quite easy once you know what you're doing. And obviously we don't have to make a whole nut roast so yeah i'll be back to see you guys in a minute hi i didn't see you there don't mind me just snacking on potato before i'm about to eat potato i'm just waiting for my pan to heat up it is time to get the veggies going there we go so no i was gonna get oil but we don't want oil we want butter or oh, margarine i've got this flora one thank you to whoever told me that the um Flora buttery is no longer vegan. I'm kind of gutted about it because I don't know why they would like all of a sudden make it not vegan anymore and put buttermilk in there, but it's fine. Well done. In there for another 15. But yeah, this is just as good, it's fine. So we're gonna put some butter in the pan. I like it quite buttery. <laughs> um, okay, that's a lot. Let me calm down. Okay, I know it's a lot, but it's, it tastes good, okay? Gonna melt it down. Oh yeah. Listen to that sizzle. Mm. <laughs> oh my God, it smells so good. Once the butter's melted down, we're gonna get that garlic and just dash it in there. And just let it kind of cook off a little bit to get the butter tasting really garlicky, to get the flavors infusing. Oh, this is beautiful. Mm. Look at that. You have no idea how much I wish you guys could smell through the camera right now. Mm. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna let that Infuse for a little bit, but I don't want the garlic to start going brown and get too cooked because then it just burns and it can make the food taste quite bitter. So I'm just gonna let that simmer for a little bit. Oh, it smells delicious. I wanna lick the spoon, is that bad? Mm. That on, on bread would be absolutely delicious. I'm gonna have to try and make some, um, what's it called, bruschetta, bruschetta. I think that's how you actually pronounce it, bruschetta, with this and like tomato. Oh. I'm gonna do another, another what I eat in a day. I can't believe I've never tried to make bruschetta before. That's insane. This is so good. 
I'm just going to chuck the greens in there now that that's cooked down a little bit. And I'm going to try and mix it up a little bit as well. I know it looks like a lot, but I promise you it's going to go down to like basically nothing once it's cooked down. Which kind of makes me sad. But we've got a lot of other food, so it's fine. All right, so once I've mixed it around a little bit and got it nice and evenly spread with like the garlic and the butter, I'm literally just going to put the lid on and put the temperature down a little bit more. Actually, I think, mm, shall I? Yeah, just a little bit more. Um, and just let that kind of steam away and soften. And that's literally it. I'm gonna check on the, the rest of the food. Oh my God. Wow, well, you guys can't see what I can see, <laughs> which is a shared shame. But the potatoes are starting to get a little bit of color. Carrots are looking a bit shriveled, which is what we kind of want. I'm so excited for this, you have no idea. Again, with the potatoes, honestly, how crispy and how cooked, etc. you like them is up to you. I like them pretty crispy, um, but yeah, I can't wait to eat this. I'm gonna cut up a red onion um, in a bit and show you guys a little addition that can be done with the gravy to make it a little bit more tasty. So now the greens have had time to soften up a little bit, I'm just gonna mix them around a little bit more so that the garlic and butter is spread a little bit more. Oh, it smells delicious. And taste a little bit. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Wow. For the gravy, I'm just gonna get some little slithers of red onion going in some olive oil. Just get them to soften up a little bit. And the gravy I use, the gravy granules, is the Arbisto. I like my gravy like I like my booty. Thick. <laughs> I'm joking, my bum is not thick, but I like my gravy really thick, so. Okay, that's a little bit too thick. It's okay, I'm gonna fix that in a minute. I always make too much gravy. Right, I'm just gonna take the roast out. This is what it's looking like now. And I'm gonna cover it in foil. Cover that in foil. Oh my god, it's hot. Don't do what I just did. And then put it back in the oven for like another 10 15 minutes whilst the rest of the food cooks. It's almost done now. I'm so excited. I'm so hungry. Sorry if this seemed a bit rushed, but I am starving. Okay, so now the onions are looking nice and soft. <laughs> I'm just gonna pour the gravy in. Do you know what I mean? I know that's really thick, guys. I need to throw some more water in there. Oh, baby. Pour some water in. Stir it all together. Oh yeah. And then the other secret ingredient, or we could say the dark horse, <laughs> I'm so funny, I know, um, is a bit of red wine. Like a little red wine gravy, and obviously the roast is a red wine and shallot roast, so it should be quite nice together. And just stir it in, and I'm just gonna keep it on the heat, let it thicken up a little bit, not that it really needs to get any thicker, um, but I just want it to stay warm until the rest of the food is ready. But that is it, that's basically the whole roast. So the next time I see you, I'll be stuffed in my face. And I know there's no stuff in all Yorkshire puds, but a bit controversial, I'm not the biggest fan of Yorkshire puds and it's really difficult to find good vegan ones. And stuffing, I mean, we've got all the veggies, who needs more carbs? Mmm, so damn good. Right, so everything's almost done. I'm just gonna take the roast out and you're supposed to let it sit for like five minutes. Look how good that looks. And you see all the juices. Oh, oh yeah. Oh baby. The carrots, um, <laughs> maybe I could have left them in for a little less time, um, but I reckon they'll taste good. So it's all good. carrots flopped so hard today I think it's maybe because I cut them too skinny I got a bit too excited a little bit too gassed a little bit gassed it's fine we move now I swear you guys aren't ready for these potatoes oh. right, so I take all the really crispy ones because I don't want them to hurt dad's mouth can you hear that wait so damn good and they're still sizzling away wow i really made a lot of potatoes today didn't i and the greens get on my plate you absolute beauties
bone apple teeth. I see both of them. How is it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you reckon I'll be able to eat this? Yep. <laughs> Do you reckon I'll be able to eat more potatoes afterwards? Go ahead, <laughs> I think I can safely say and speak for both of us when I say that nothing is more satisfying than that. <laughs> Did you see that? He obviously disagrees. Do you agree? To a degree? Even that. That was lovely. I'm gonna polish off this glass of wine and I'm probably gonna go put my clothes away in my room because it's like a whole hurricane went through there after I've done all the washing. And I'm probably gonna sit down and read. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Hurricanes, I'm through this house. Mm. <laughs> Can sit straight to the sea. But there's two different types of hurricanes, <laughs> if you'd like to explain, sir. <laughs> sir, the people are waiting. You can see straight to the sea, though. <laughs> All the way. And what's eating, the, the what's grass, the, eating the grass in the grass in the And what's the other type of hurricane, good sir? Uh, I don't know that hurricane. I don't know what's in that blow down trees and clear, clear spaces that you can see straight to the sea. This guy's out of order. I'll tell ya. Oh my god, I'm so full. That was lovely. Right, Pete. It's time to feed the pooch now. Do you want some food? Yeah. Hi. Good morning, guys. I just finished up editing the video that you've just watched and realized oh my god the script the, sorry the lens is dirty and just realized that i <laughs> just realized that i never ended the vlog so i thought i'd just pop in and say thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this one i've already got my next what i eat in a day planned because i've discovered a new kind of breakfast that's cool and i definitely want to do the katsu curry for you guys so stay tuned for that um, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me attempt to make. But yeah, for now, I'm going to take my pooch out for a little walk. So I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Mwah.